Neanderthals and Denisovans were our closest ancient human relatives before they went extinct. These fascinating groups interbred with early modern humans, leaving behind a genetic legacy that still lingers in people today. If your ancestors came from outside Africa, you likely carry a small percentage of Neanderthal DNA, while some Asian and Oceanian populations also have traces of Denisovan ancestry. This genetic mixing tells us that when our ancestors migrated from Africa, they met and mingled with these ancient cousins. Yet despite their importance, we're still piecing together the Neanderthal genetic story. Scientists have only managed to sequence five Neanderthal genomes so far, and most are frustratingly incomplete. While we have some genetic material from key sites like Vindija Cave in Croatia and Mesmyskaya Cave in the Caucasus, these sequences lack detail. Even with additional fragments recovered from Spanish and Croatian specimens, the limited and often low-quality data, especially from central regions where Neanderthals thrived, leaves big gaps in our understanding of their genetic history and their lasting impact on modern humans. So far, scientists have successfully sequenced high-quality genomes from only a few ancient individuals, two Neanderthals and one Denisovan. The first Neanderthal genome comes from Vindija Cave in Croatia and is often referred to as the Croatian Neanderthal. The second, known as the Altai Neanderthal, or Denisova V, was found in Denisova Cave in Siberia's Altai Mountains. Discovered in Denisova Cave, Siberia, Denisova V lived approximately between 120,000 to 90,000 years ago, making it one of the oldest high-quality Neanderthal genomes sequenced. Genetic analysis reveals that this individual belonged to an early Neanderthal population that was more distantly related to later European Neanderthals, including those from Vindija Cave. Unlike later Neanderthals, Denisova V shows lower genetic contributions to modern humans, suggesting its group had limited contact with early Homo sapiens. Interestingly, Denisova V was found in the same cave as the Denisovans, an entirely different archaic human group. This indicates that Siberia was a contact zone where multiple hominin species, including Neanderthals and Denisovans, coexisted and occasionally interbred. The Vindija Neanderthals from Croatia lived much later, around 52,000 to 44,000 years ago. Their genomes show that they were part of a later, more derived Neanderthal population that had replaced or mixed with earlier groups like the Altai Neanderthals. Vindija Cave in Croatia was one of the last known habitats of Neanderthals before their extinction. The cave contains numerous bone fragments, many too damaged to identify by appearance alone. However, the site has exceptionally well-preserved ancient DNA, allowing researchers to extract genetic material not only from Neanderthals, but also from Pleistocene-era animals like cave bears. Unlike Denisova V, the Vindija Neanderthals contributed significantly more DNA to modern humans. About 1.8 to 2.6% of non-African genomes today. This suggests they were among the last Neanderthals to interact with early modern humans before going extinct. Their genetic legacy is strongest in East Asians, possibly due to later population movements. One of the most surprising discoveries came from a bone fragment in Denisova Cave belonging to Denisova 11. A young girl whose DNA showed she had a Neanderthal mother and a Denisovan father. Even more intriguing, her Neanderthal mother was genetically closer to the Croatian Neanderthal than to the Altai Neanderthal. This finding suggests that at some point, a different group of Neanderthals migrated into the Altai region, replacing or mixing with the earlier population. Such interactions highlight the complex movements and relationships between ancient human groups. To further explore these dynamics, scientists recently sequenced the complete genome of a Neanderthal from Chagirskaya Cave, located near Denisova Cave. This new genome helps researchers better understand the Neanderthal population structure, migration patterns, and genetic adaptations. By comparing these ancient genomes with modern human DNA, 
scientists can uncover how interbreeding influenced our evolution. The Chagirskaya 8 Neanderthal, discovered in a Siberian cave in 2011, represents an important piece of the puzzle in understanding ancient human history. Scientists extracted DNA from just 50 milligrams of bone powder, revealing remarkably well-preserved genetic material with minimal contamination from modern humans. This pristine preservation allowed researchers to sequence a high-quality genome, providing unprecedented insights into this individual's life and relationships. The success of this extraction demonstrates how advances in ancient DNA technology continue to revolutionize our understanding of prehistoric populations. Dating this Neanderthal proved particularly interesting, as different methods produced slightly conflicting results. Genetic analysis suggested Chagirskaya 8 lived approximately 80,000 years ago, placing it between two other well-known Neanderthals, the older Altai specimen, about 110,000 years old, and the more recent Croatian individual rounding sediment layer indicated a younger age of about 60,000 years. This discrepancy could result from various factors, including potential movement of the bone within the cave deposits over millennia or limitations in our current dating techniques. Genetic comparisons revealed fascinating connections between Chagirskaya 8 and other ancient humans. This individual showed closer ties to European Neanderthals like Croatian individual Vindija Cave than to earlier Siberian populations, suggesting a westward migration at some point in Neanderthal history. Most remarkably, Chagaskaya 8 shared significant genetic similarity with the famous hybrid Denisovan 11, whose mother came from a Neanderthal population closely related to European groups. This connection provides compelling evidence for multiple waves of Neanderthal expansion across Eurasia and complex interactions between different ancient human groups. The study of Chagaskaya 8 also shed new light on the genetic legacy of Neanderthals in modern humans. While all non-African populations today carry some Neanderthal DNA, this particular individual contributed less to modern human genomes than the later Vindija Cave Neanderthal. This finding suggests that different Neanderthal populations interacted with our ancestors to varying degrees, with some groups leaving a more substantial genetic imprint than others. The reasons behind these differences remain unclear, but may relate to timing, geography, or cultural factors influencing interbreeding opportunities. To investigate potential regional variations in Neanderthal ancestry, researchers examined hundreds of modern genomes from across Eurasia and Oceania. Surprisingly, they found no evidence that Chagirskaya 8's population contributed uniquely to any present-day group. Instead, the genetic data suggest that the Neanderthals who interbred with our ancestors were broadly similar to both Chagirskaya 8 and the Vindija woman, representing a related but more successful branch of the Neanderthal family tree. These findings paint a complex picture of ancient human interactions, where some Neanderthal groups thrived while others left only faint traces in the archaeological record. The Vindija woman lived 52,000 years ago, the Altai Neanderthal 122,000 years ago, the Chagirskaya 8 individual approximately 80,000 years ago, and the Denisovan 72,000 years ago. These dates reveal a chronological sequence where the Altai Neanderthal represents the earliest population, followed by the Denisovan, then Chagirskaya 8, and finally the Vindija individual. Genetic comparisons show Neanderthals and Denisovans split between 390 and 440,000 years ago, while Neanderthals and modern humans diverged between 520 and 630,000 years ago. The Vindija and Altai Neanderthal populations separated between 130 and 145,000 years ago, with Chigurskaya 8 showing an intermediate divergence time of about 100,000 years from the Vindija lineage. This places Chigurskaya 8 as part of a later Neanderthal population that was more closely related to European Neanderthals like Vindija than to the older Altai group, yet still maintained some distinct genetic characteristics. 
The Chagirskaya 8 Neanderthal is genetically closer to the Croatian Neanderthal and other late Neanderthals from Western Eurasia than to Denisova 5, an older Neanderthal who lived in the Altai Mountains. This suggests that some Neanderthal groups from Western Eurasia migrated eastward into Siberia between 120,000 and 80,000 years ago. The tools found in Chagirskaya cave are similar to those from Central and Eastern Europe, indicating that these Neanderthals brought their tool-making traditions with them. During this eastward movement, they also encountered local Denisovan groups, as seen in Denisova 11, a child with a Denisovan father and a Neanderthal mother related to Chagirskaya 8's group. Early modern humans were likely interbred with Neanderthals before the Vindija Altai split around 145,000 years ago. The Vindija genome shows no evidence of separate modern human interbreeding, suggesting all such mixing occurred before European and Siberian Neanderthals diverged. This indicates interbreeding was probably common among many Pleistocene human groups. The Chagirskaya 8 Neanderthal from Siberia reveals fascinating connections between different Neanderthal groups. While found in the same region as the much older Denisova 5 specimen, its DNA shows stronger ties to later European Neanderthals, like the Vindija woman. This suggests significant population movements across Eurasia, with later groups replacing or mixing with earlier ones. The genetic links become particularly interesting when examining relationships with Denisovans. Chagirskaya 8 shares fewer genes with the Denisova 3 individual than Denisova 5 does, but shows closer connections to Denisova 11, a first-generation Neanderthal-Denisovan hybrid. This indicates Chagirskaya 8 may have been closely related to Denisova 11's Neanderthal mother, demonstrating complex interbreeding patterns between these ancient human groups. Modern humans outside Africa carry Neanderthal DNA, a legacy of interbreeding that occurred 50,000, 90,000 years ago. Both Chagirskaya 8 and the Vindija woman contributed similarly to modern human genetics, though detailed analysis suggests the Vindija population may have played a slightly larger role in shaping our DNA. When examining only the Neanderthal-derived segments in modern humans, the Vindija group's genetic influence appears somewhat stronger. However, broad comparisons across populations in Asia, Europe, India, and Oceania show no significant difference in how much DNA they share with either Shagirskaya 8 or the Vindija woman. Neanderthal ancestry comes from populations related to Vindija, Mesmaiskaya, rather than the Altai lineage. All studied Neanderthals show signs of living in extremely small, isolated communities. The Denisova 5 individual reveals severe inbreeding with long stretches of identical DNA indicating closely related parents. Chagaskaya 8 shows less extreme but still significant inbreeding patterns, while the Vindija woman's DNA suggests a slightly larger, though still very small, population size. Computer models estimate Siberian Neanderthals lived in groups of fewer than 60 individuals, dramatically smaller than contemporary Denisovan and modern human communities that numbered over 100. This might also be because the Altai region was on the edge of the Neanderthals' range and was likely more heavily populated by Denisovans. These patterns suggest Neanderthal groups frequently existed as small, vulnerable populations. These tiny population sizes likely contributed to Neanderthals' eventual extinction, Scientists examined nearly 1,000 significant genetic changes across 889 Neanderthal genes that could affect protein function, along with thousands of other variations. Surprisingly, none of these changes clustered in particular biological systems or functions. This suggests that while Neanderthals accumulated many genetic differences from modern humans, these didn't create dramatically different biological capabilities. The findings paint a picture of Neanderthals as numerous, small, isolated groups with limited genetic diversity, occasionally mixing with each other and other human species, but ultimately unable to maintain sufficient population sizes to survive alongside expanding modern humans. The medical implications of Neanderthal DNA are significant. 
The Vindiger genome helps identify more disease-related variants inherited from Neanderthals, including associations with cholesterol levels, vitamin D metabolism, eating disorders, fat distribution, rheumatoid arthritis, schizophrenia, and immune responses. These findings demonstrate how Neanderthal DNA continues to influence human health, particularly affecting neurological, psychiatric, and immune-related traits in modern populations. The Vindiger genome provides unprecedented power to study these ancient genetic contributions to contemporary disease risks. Researchers studying Neanderthal DNA made an interesting discovery about how their brains developed differently from ours. They found that Neanderthal teenagers had more genetic mutations in genes active in the striatum, a brain region involved in movement and motivation, compared to other brain areas. These mutations affected both the proteins themselves and the genetic switches controlling when these genes turned on and off. What's particularly notable is that these striatum-related genes are located in parts of the genome where modern humans have very little Neanderthal DNA, suggesting these changes may have been harmful or unhelpful to our ancestors and were eventually eliminated through natural selection. The same pattern of genetic changes wasn't seen equally across all brain regions. While the striatum showed the most differences, other areas like the posterior parietal cortex, involved in spatial reasoning, ventrolateral prefrontal cortex, important for decision-making, and somatosensory cortex, processes touch sensations, also displayed notable changes in their regulatory DNA during prenatal development. This suggests Neanderthal brain development followed a somewhat different genetic program than modern humans, especially in regions controlling movement and sensory processing. Interestingly, scientists also identified 35 regions of the Neanderthal genome that appear to have undergone positive selection, meaning these genetic changes were likely beneficial and helped Neanderthals survive. These selected regions include genes related to brain development, immune system function, wound healing, and energy production in cells. Some of these beneficial genetic changes overlap with regions that also show signs of positive selection in modern humans, indicating both species may have independently evolved similar advantageous traits in these areas. This finding helps explain why some Neanderthal DNA persists in modern human populations. We likely kept the helpful bits while discarding the less compatible ones.